Previously on BJ Fletcher Private Eye. I can't do this on my own. I'll help you, but that's as far as it goes. Fletch just can't resist being the knight in shining armor. She just keeps trying to weasel her way into Fletch's life with her... Now, there is no guarantee that little Tony is even going to lead us to anything. we got to get to little Tony's by 2 p.m. He thinks we're big spenders from out of town, so we got to look the part. I feel so stupid. I hear you're interested in acquiring some bicycle stock. We have a buyer who's interested in acquiring a limited edition Gold Star Astrio XTS 250. They're not easy to come by. Money is no object. Well, it better not be. I'd hate to go through all this trouble only to have to break both your legs. Understood. I'll have Mr. Joshua check the inventory later today. Now all we have to do is wait for Mr. Joshua to leave and we follow him right to the bikes. Do you really think he meant it about breaking our legs? Of course not. He's just playing up the whole mobster thing. No, Ma. No, it'd just be me and you and Jenna and her mom. Yeah, she really wants to meet you. Wait, Mom, I gotta go. Fletch, wake up. He's leaving, we gotta oh. roll. I can see it. Still has a water bottle in it. What's your big rush anyway? Lurch won't be back till tonight. How do you know? Guessing. <gasps> this could be a problem. George, I just want you to know, if I go in there and I don't come out, I want you to have my tape recorder. And my coat, unless it's all covered in blood and guts and... George! George! George, are you okay? Some attack dog. When he saw me, he peed on the floor and ran out a hole in the back. Exactly like I said he would. Well, let's just move these bikes out of the way. It'll be easier. Easier? Yes. Faster? No. And as I recall, somebody needs to be in class in an hour. Fine. Just be careful. Well, that's odd. I have no idea what that is. satisfying to a P.I. than taking a whopper-sized bite out of organized crime. Well-planned and executed operations such as these are what make the job worth doing. Fletcher, you just happen to be walking through the neighborhood? Purely coincidental, Magnum. George and I were out for our usual afternoon power walk when we heard that dog barking. Yes, and... and we were really worried that there was some kind of crazy dog abuse happening, mm -hmm. so we broke into the shed mm -hmm. to make sure that the dog was okay. Was it okay? Was mm -hmm. what okay? The dog. What dog? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the dog was okay. You two do realize this is property of the Russitalia Kuza Mafia, don't you? Really? No way! That is so weird. Mm -hmm. You two had better be careful. This is serious stuff. Relax, we're just concerned citizens doing our civicalistic duty. Damn, here comes my boss. Look, you two are not PRs, and I don't know either one of you. Magnum! Are these the two that called the police? Yes, ma'am. This is Miss Fletcher and Miss, uh, what's your name again? Miss Drew. Miss Drew, this is Police Chief Marlowe. Great work today, ladies. If only all our citizens felt the same sense of responsibility you do. Thanks, it's, um, all just part of the job. 
Oh, what job is that? Oh, we're private insurance here. underwriters. We are private insurance underwriters, and that is what we do. Really? Because I was just thinking about getting myself a little insurance. Oh yeah, you should um, you should call me. Maybe I will. Magnum, there just might be a promotion in this for you. Thank you, ma'am. Nice work. Well, Magnum, we gotta get going, so we'll uh, call you later. See you later, buddy. Sounds good. So how's your mom? Well, I don't think she was expecting the papers to come through so quickly, but I don't know. I think she's doing fine. I'm gonna be here for a while anyway, so you two go ahead and start the celebrations. What are you sure? Yes, of course. I'll come on again. Okay. Well, I'll see you soon. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Jenna just said to go on without her and that she's gonna hang out with her mom for a little while. Okay. And I need you to know, it's not that I'm not happy that we finished the case, it's just... Are you sure little Tony's not gonna send somebody to break our legs? Of course I'm sure. But what about... the drugs? George, A, little Tony really doesn't know anything about us. B, it's not like we're going to be testifying in court. And D, Magnum will probably have him locked in jail soon. You know, you're probably right. Of course I'm right. We have nothing to worry about. Well, show me how this works. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you need to put that in that hand. This goes around so that you don't hit nobody with it. It's Marjorie. You're not going to answer it? No, I'm hanging out with you right now. We're celebrating. Now, you gonna show me this works or not? Okay. You gotta stand up. Because it's just like real boxing. Okay. Because mm. so you make realistic maneuvers, and first you might be right. tricky, but then you get real good at it. Like that. Like that. Just answer. She's just gonna keep calling. I'll put the kettle on and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna kick your ass. Yellow. Oh. What? No. When? Yeah, of course I'll be there. Yeah, no, it's fine. No. Yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. What's wrong? Did she lose a boot? Well, that was my stepmother. Judith, what did she want? My father's dead. You know what I don't understand about funerals? Egg salad. Well, what's with all the egg salad? Nobody likes it. Nobody eats it. And at the end of the day, you're just left with a big pile of soggy egg salad sandwiches. My father did not like egg salad. You know why? Because nobody likes egg salad. Because nobody likes egg salad. Oh, awesome egg salad. Hey, wait. So this is where you are. This is where I am. Can I get you another one? Well, you could have if you got in here a half hour ago, or 10 minutes ago, or two minutes ago. Sorry. My mom was trying to instigate a song circle. Fantastic. How you doing? I'm fine. Look, Fletch, you don't have to. George, let's not turn this into something it's not. Just have a few drinks. I'll get whatever it is Judy has for me, and we'll get out of here. Have you talked to her yet? Nope. She's too busy playing the widow. I liked it better when she just played the other woman. You know, I'm only known as the other woman in this family. No, in this family, you're known as something else. Your mother, Georgia, is simply delightful. Thank you. You don't see that hairstyle very often anymore, do you? Beatrix, why are you skulking around the kitchen? You should be mingling out there. It's the very least you can do. 
Actually, I think this is the least I could do. I think your father would have appreciated you shaking a few hands. Oh, so I'd be doing that for him? I see you haven't changed, Beatrix. You always could be relied upon to do the absolute minimum. Well, if you can't rely on family, who can you rely on? To be honest, I thought you might have done some growing up. But I see you're still only thinking about yourself. Well, I'm certainly not thinking about you, Judy. So who else is there? I know you blame me for the affair and his leaving. But as I'm sure you remember, your father had a very strong will of his own. Do you really think that I could have prevented him from staying with your mother if he'd really wanted to? You'll find your box of things in the spare room. Let's go. Well, don't mind her, she's a bitch. I know. I'd like to say she's the worst mother in the world, but there was that woman in Texas with the freezer. <laughs> so what's all this stuff? I don't know, looks like a box of paper. Beatrix has a naturally inquisitive nature, although her desire to express herself often leads to disruption of the class. I totally wasn't the one disrupting class. Oh, give it up. Yes, you were. You spent more time in the hallway than you did in your seat that year. I was clearly misunderstood. Yeah, well, I understood you. I remember you used to sneak out of class and bring me food. Yeah, fruit roll-ups. I love fruit roll-ups. How in the world did you get a D-minus in gym? Dodgeball. Oh, <laughs> That wasn't your fault, though, and that firefighter was an idiot. I know. I can't believe he kept all this junk. Maybe it meant something to him. Yeah, health records and report cards. That's his love to me. Flight. Remember that? Look, Fletch, you're absolutely wrong. I've got to disagree with you on this one. Look, George, I know what I know. I'm telling you, Tootie was not gay. Of course she was. She rode a motorcycle and had a mullet. That was Joe. Joe, the one with the blonde hair who got all the men? Oh, that was Blair. Blair, the one who ran the bakery? What can I get you to, the usual? Yes, please, Angela, that'd be wicked awesome. George, remember that episode where the girls had that competition with the misfits to see who could sell the most records? No, actually, I don't, because that was Gem and the Holograms. Here you go, ladies. Thanks, Mrs. Do you have any cream around? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't. A fuse or something blew last night in the refrigerator, just conked out. All the cream went bad. Oh. And my cashier phoned in sick today, so I haven't had a chance to run to the store. How ironical. Yeah. And a few days ago, my mixer broke down without any warning. Wow, what a string of bad luck. No kidding. Well, with a new bakery opening up down the street, it couldn't happen at a worse time. Sounds like sabotage, if you ask me. Really? You think so? Oh, yeah. Now, Fletch, there's no need to jump to conclusions. Well, I was getting a little suspicious. Of an employee? You think it was an employee? Studies show that 13.92% of employees will commit an act of vandalism at their workplace in their lifetime. Act of vandalism? One study. There was a study. But how would I know? Well, Angie, funny you should ask. George and I? P.I.s.